Good morning. morning. Wonderful to have each of you with us as we worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this day. As always, everything is projected for you behind us here on the wall. We're concluding our teaching series of That's in the Bible today with a look into the book of Revelation. Um, So that'll be fun. Um, We do have a children's message for our kids this day. And as you see, our praise team is leading us in song. That's it. So I do pray that God bless each of you as you worship him this morning. I invite you to stand now as we begin our worship singing, O Come to the Altar. <laughs> Jesus is calling. 
worship that treasure that is ours in Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To you, O Lord, I call, my rock, be not deaf to me. Hear the voice of my pleas for mercy. When I cry to you for help, when I lift up my hands towards your most holy sanctuary. I really invite you to join me now as we silently reflect upon our past week, bringing all the sins we know and those sins we don't know to God our Father. Now together we cry out to our Lord, Father of mercy, we confess that we are not the people you created us to be. We confess that we are by nature sinners and in rebellion against your will. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by the things we have done wrong and the good we have failed to do. We have sinned against each other and broken the bonds of fellowship. Forgive us of our sins, remove the evil from our hearts and minds, and teach us to follow you with willing hearts. Friends, through the mercy of God in Christ Jesus, our Savior, you have been made the children of God and received his mercy. Therefore, as a call and ordained servant of the word, I announce God's grace to you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you please be seated for our scripture readings. The first reading for today is taken from Revelation 12, starting at the first verse. And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the, with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pains and the agony of giving birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on his, seven, and on his head seven diadems. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. She, she gave birth to a male child, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was caught up to God and to his throne, and the woman fled into the wilderness, where she has a place prepared by God, in which she is to be nourished for 1,260 days. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel reading from Matthew 2, starting at the 16th verse. Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious, and he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and in all that region who were two years old or under according to the time that he had ascertained from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping in loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted because they are no more. This is the gospel of the Lord. Congregation may be seated. I'd like to invite our children up front for our children's message. Good morning, friends. How are you? Good. Thanks for coming up to the front. I have a question. Whenever you wake up in the morning, what are some of the first choices or decisions that you have to make when you wake up in the morning? 
That was actually going to be, yes. Can I sleep for five more minutes? Do you ever feel that way? Are you guys just ready to go? Yeah. <laughs> He'd sleep the whole day. All right. How about um, breakfast? Do you guys choose what you want for breakfast some mornings? Yeah. yeah? Okay. How about getting dressed? You ever choose what you want to wear? Do mom and dad help you out with that sometime? Sometimes, sometimes both. You know, whenever we, we get dressed in the morning, sometimes what the weather is going to be like helps us decide what we're going to wear, right? So if it's like really sunny outside, what might we wear? A t-shirt, right? Maybe shorts, yep. How about a hat, too? Just kind of keep the sun out of your eyes. You guys had great answers, but sometimes a hat, too, or sunglasses, right? How about if it's going to be snowy outside? What might we wear? Yeah, Ben. Might wear a jacket, hat. Yeah, snow pants. This is a warning to moms and dads. It is snow pants season, right? So, uh, so yeah, you could wear snow pants, right? How about if it's uh, super cold outside? Maybe, maybe gloves too, right? How about if it's rainy outside? Yeah, cool. A raincoat. Yep. I don't have a raincoat, but we do have a poncho here, right? Maybe put one of these on. You know, there's lots of decisions to make whenever we're getting dressed in the morning. Some people want to wear something that has a, from a specific company, like has a name brand. Some people want their clothes to be really nice and have no holes in them. And then there's, of course, other people that like having holes in their jeans, <laughs> right? whole bunch of decisions that, that, that we can make um, in the morning. But when we get dressed in the morning, it's a good time to remember what the Bible says that we should wear. Now, does the Bible tell us if we should wear jeans or shorts? No, it doesn't tell us about that, but it does tell us what we should put on. Look at this verse behind me that I have for you. It says, you, that means you and all of you, are holy and dearly loved. So put on tender mercy and kindness as if they were your clothes. Don't be proud. Be gentle and patient. Forgive one another just as the Lord forgave you. And over all these things, put on love. Put on love. Why do you think the Lord, Jesus, wants us to put on things like kindness and patience and gentleness and forgiveness. Yeah, so that other people can know, right, that we love them and that they can know that we have a God who loves them. Because the clothes that the, the Bible is talking about here isn't just for us, right? It's so that other people may know of God's love for us. Now, where do I get these clothes of kindness and patience and gentleness? Do I go to my, my kindness closet? Do I pull out a kindness shirt? Anything like that? Do you have any idea where I might go to learn about these? The Bible, right? The Bible tells us uh, about the love that Jesus gives us. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, he helps us put on these clothes. The Bible tells us about Jesus, right, who loves us so much that he lived a perfect life. It was like he had perfect clothes on, nothing wrong with them. And then he looked at our sinful, dirty, stained clothes, and he took our dirty, sinful, stained clothes on the cross, and he gave us his perfect clothes. In fact, the Bible says it like this. This is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. It says, it says, all of you who were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. You have put him on as if he were your clothes. You know, the great thing about this outfit that Jesus gives us, it never goes out of style. One size fits all. It doesn't matter if you're young or old. Jesus' Jesus's love and forgiveness is for you and for all of them to be seen as you put those clothes on. Now, 
when we get dressed in the morning, it's a great time to remember the clothes that Jesus gives us, that of kindness and love and patience. And these clothes are so that others may see a God that knows and loves them. Let's thank Jesus for these clothes. Congregation, we ask you to, to join us in this word of prayer. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus thank, you for giving me clothes. thank you for giving me clothes. As I get ready each morning, ready each morning help, me to remember help me to remember that you have dressed me, you have me in your love and forgiveness. Help me, to show Help me to show others the same love. The same love. In, Jesus In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming up, friends. As the kids head back, I invite you to stand and join our praise team in singing our next song, Firm Foundation.
couldn't have a seat. Knowing that he won't fail, let's start off with a question for ourselves this morning. And that question is, what is your purpose here? Why has God called you by the gospel, saved and redeemed you by the blood of Jesus Christ? Is it to just sit here right now and receive? Is it to, thank you, is it to collect as many toys as you want? Is it to put all your hopes and dreams in the world? No. You are here as saved, forgiven, redeemed children of God to tell others about Jesus. To tell others that Jesus Christ died on the cross to forgive you and them of all their sins. To share with others that he has defeated sin and death and the devil. That's why you're here. That is what is the most important mission of the church. The most important mission of this church and every church is to witness, to share to others, to show, to spread the love of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Period. Today, we conclude this fun little teaching series that we've been calling, That's in the Bible? With a look into the book that a few of you have come up to me and said, Pastor Scott, I've never heard a message preached from this book. Would you do it? And I said, sure, why not? We're looking at the book of Revelation. But why is that? Why why are are, are some pastors, some, some, some synods, some denominations afraid to look at this book? Is it a challenging book? Yeah, for sure. Is it an exciting book? Yeah. Is it an important book? Yeah, why? Because it's one of the 66 that's in there. It's an important book. And so I can't answer for them why they don't do it, but but what I can say is that we're going to cast fear aside. And, And knowing that the Holy Spirit is on our side and the Holy Spirit is leading us as we dig into Revelation 12 this morning... He's going to work. So Revelation 12 is where we're going to be. Invite you to open up your Bible or your Bible app. Revelation 12, 1 to 6. But before we get into Revelation itself, it's important that you understand what we believe when we read this book of Revelation. So we believe, we teach here at at this church, at Lutheran Memorial, that right now, friends, we are living in the end times. We have been living in the end times since Jesus ascended into heaven. So the things happening now are the same things that have been happening for centuries. Wars and rumors and wars, those types of things. So as we read and and teach this book of Revelation, it's important for us to understand that we don't look at, at this as a linear approach. Okay, it's cyclical. So, so we are living in the last days until Jesus comes back again to take us home and create a new heavens and a new earth. Okay, that's where we have to start. That's where we have to understand where we're coming from. So this, this book of Revelation now, while unique, actually proclaims the gospel of Jesus throughout and empowers the church for her mission. And what mission is that? (laughs) Right? What is the mission of the church? Why are we here? We talked about this, right? But to tell others of Jesus and his love. But how important is this mission? Well, for anyone of, yeah, you guys are starting to answer. You've known me for a while now, right? So, So anyone who knows me or has known me over the past seven years knows that the mission of the church Not just this church, but the church at large is of the utmost importance. It has been proclaimed and taught from the moment I step foot in this building. Because that's all it is. This is the building. You're the church. And that's because right now, as we live in these, the last days, people are dying and going to hell. People are being torn from the truth of Scripture and believing the lies of the devil. And that's not okay. I'm not okay with this, and you should not be okay with this. 
You're the church. You're the body of Christ. It's to be your mission just as much as it is mine. I'm not going to be here someday. What then? Will this body of Christ carry on with the mission of God set before them? Thank you. I think so. So how important is this message? How important is this message, this mission of sharing Jesus with the world? Well, let's look at the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 12. We're going to walk through this verse by verse. Revelation chapter 12, beginning with verse 1. But before we dig in, what do we need to do? We need to pray. Father God, we need to pray. We need to come to you. We need to seek your will, your guidance as we dig into your most holy words. So we pray that you send your Holy Spirit upon this place. And my words may be your words as we proclaim the truth and love of your Son, Jesus Christ, in all its purity. Let that same Holy Spirit work in the hearts of these, your children, that they may be moved to understand even more the mission of you have set them on, to know you, to show you, and to share the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whatever they say and do. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so here we go. Revelation. Everyone's been waiting for it, or at least a few of you. Revelation 12, 1. And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. This great sign appeared in heaven. A woman. So let's stop here for a moment. The sign of, of, of the woman appears in heaven. You know what this means? This means that her presence is before God. That she is from God, that she is related to his saving presence because she is in heaven. But who is this woman? This woman represents God's people. This woman represents all God's people, all Old Testament, all New Testament people, then and now people. This woman represents all the people of God, both Israel and the Church of Christ. Now, this woman is clothed with the sun. She's clothed with the brilliance of Christ. Chad talked about being clothed, right? She's clothed with the brilliance of Christ. God has put around her, nothing she has done, God has put around her this brilliant sunlit glory that in Christ and because of him, she stands in God's holy presence. So you and me, the church, we stand before God in this glorious presence because of Christ. Pretty awesome. Now, the next few words talk about how the moon is under her feet. So what this is, this is a, this is a symbol of, of dominion and authority. Okay, This is a symbol of dominion and authority that the woman exercises as she carries out her mission. Her mission given by who? God. And so while she carries out this mission of taking this name of Jesus anywhere and everywhere, this mission she is given by God, she does it with a crown on her head. What is the crown on her head but the victor's wreath? Indicating that because of the Christ child, because of Christ, God's people are victorious. Keep moving on. 12-2. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pains in the agony of giving birth. So, the, the woman is pregnant, crying out in these birth pains and, and, and this agony of giving birth. So, so, yes, first we have to understand these birth pains represent the coming of Jesus in the flesh. So the woman is also representative of Mary. 
but also the mother of all believers. Mary's not the mother of all believers. Mary gave birth to Jesus, but she is not the mother of all believers. She gives birth to the Messiah. So this, this woman represents the faithful people of God. Right? As faithful people of God, what are you out there doing? What are you out there telling? Oh, you're doing and telling the mission of God. You're telling the mission of Jesus. So this woman represents the faithful people of God who long for the Messiah to come back as well. All right? So, so that's what's going on here. And while this is all going on, another sign appeared. Look at this. Look at Revelation 12, 3. John doesn't waste time. He says, And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on his head seven diadems. This is fun. <laughs> First, it's, it's another sign. But notice the words used. It's just another sign. The first sign was a great sign. Look it back at verse 1. It's a, a great sign that was in the heavens. This time, ah, it's just a, another sign. So it's not as important as the first sign. But this sign is of a great red dragon. The great red dragon is Satan. Deceptive, sneaky Satan. Why is he deceptive, though? Why, why do we say he's deceptive? Why do we say he is, is sneaky? Well, look at the description that is given of him. He's got seven heads. Seven is a complete number, right? So, so seven heads here. Satan is saying here that he, and not Jesus... Is the spirit that has knowledge to supervise all things on earth. Then on each of the heads is a diadem. Seven total. And what this is, is this is Satan proclaiming that he is the all-powerful one. He has lordship over all the earth. Saying that he is the royalty. And then you add in those ten horns. And this means that Satan says he has supreme power over all the earth. All of the ten horns symbolize power that has been given by him under his consent to do his work and by his guidance. So Satan, the dragon, is attempting to pass himself off as having this power over all of the people, over all of the kingdom on the earth. That's what's going on here. But what is this? It's a lie. This is a, a, a huge, massive lie. But for all who believe, all who are deceived by this dragon, you know what it spells? Doom. It spells doom. And we can't forget the color of the dragon. What's the color? Red. Red symbolizes murder and bloodshed. So what is this dragon doing? If he's lying and he's deceiving all these people, or trying to pull all these people away from the truth, what is he doing? Look, look, look at this first part of verse 4 in Revelation 12. It says this, His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. So this dragon's whipping his tail around, and he knocked down a third of the stars from heaven. To where? The earth. So what is this? This is a third of the angels, guys. The stars represent angels here. So a third of the angels fell, right? Satan said, you want to be on my team? We're going to go and take on God. We're going to fight him. And a third of the angels went with him, and guess what? They lost. We learned about stars being angels earlier in Revelation 1.16. So if you want to go back, that's where that is. So what you have here is John doing a dramatic retelling of Satan and a third of these angels rebelling against God. These angels bought into the lies. They bought into deception of Satan. 
And because of it, they fell. They were knocked down just like him to this earth. Now look at the rest of verse 4. This is where it really starts to get fun. The dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. The dragon, Satan, stood before the woman waiting for the birth of, of, of her child so that he might destroy it. Not the woman. He doesn't want to destroy the woman right now. He wants to destroy the child. This deceptive dragon, Satan sees this opportunity to destroy Jesus as he took on flesh. He would do anything. He would go to any lengths to get rid of Jesus, including the slaying of the innocents. What is that? Oh, that's back to the gospel reading Tony read for us. Matthew 2, 16 to 18, where Herod killed all the male children to and under. So Satan is just lying in wait, ready to jump and to destroy this child. Then verse 5. She gave birth to a male child, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron, but her child was caught up to God and to his throne. The woman gives birth to a son. It says a male child, a son. And one who is to rule with a rod of iron. But here's the thing, as quickly as we hear of the birth, it says that this child is snatched up to God to his throne. What just happened here? What did, what did John just do here? In a matter of a few words, John details the entire ministry of Jesus. That's what he's doing here. The incarnation, the entire ministry of his time here on this earth, the passion, the death, the resurrection, the ascension of Jesus Christ wrapped up in those words, snatched up to God and to his throne. Friends, what John is doing here, he's emphasizing the whole reason why Jesus came. The final outcome of what Jesus came to do. The final outcome of his incarnation, his passion, death, and resurrection It's to get to his ascension. His ascension that demonstrates victory over the dragon. His ascension that demonstrates victory over not only the dragon, but all the forces of evil, and yes, even death. Jesus is exalted here. Not the dragon. Not Satan. Jesus, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, is now exalted here because he is victoriously sitting at the right hand of God, awaiting his time to come back again. And yet, time and time again, throughout his life, the dragon tried to destroy Jesus. But it never happened. And so Jesus ascended He was caught up to God. But what about the woman? What about the woman? What about the church? What about her? What happens next? Look at Revelation 12, 6. The woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God in which she is to be nourished for 1,260 days. Now I know this is something you're going to just get lost on the numbers. Don't. 1,260 days, that's three and a half years. What does it mean? It just, 
it, it just symbolizes the length of time that the woman, the church, will be on earth in exile and that God will care for her. That's it. Layman terms, this, this number signifies a period of persecution and testing for God's people. All the while where she will be nourished. We can't forget that part. It says it in there. Friends, we are living in the wilderness of Revelation right now. All around us, what do we see? But the dragon attacking. Satan using people and politics, money and sports and jobs, everything and anything to attack, to, to pull God's people away. Every day we, God's children, are under attack. And so often because we're under attack, it feels that we're left alone. Wandering in the wilderness by ourselves, wondering if, if God even cares or if he will even ever show up for us. Friends, I get it. I've been there too. Sometimes we have to endure. Sometimes we have to struggle. Sometimes we have to learn from our mistakes. Yet every time, God remembers us. Every time. Amidst the despair, amidst the pain, amidst the frustration, he remembers us. He nourishes us. God's word, Revelation 12, 6, said that while she, the church, God's people, have fled into the wilderness, she, the church, God's people, you and me, will be nourished. Daily. Daily, he richly provides us what we need. What do you need today that he provides? What do you need today as the dragon pursues, what do you need daily that he and he alone richly provides? Jesus. Forgiveness. Grace. Undeserved love. And where is this found? It's found in Jesus, but it's then found in the, the Bible and found in the church. God's people, the woman. God's people sharing and caring, loving and serving. God providing everything we need as found in his word, lived out by his spirit in the lives of who? You, me, his children, the church. Friends, the dragon is not going to stop. He's not. We're going to have to fight and we're going to have to suffer. But we will not be overtaken. We will not lose. For Christ has won. He's won for you. He's won for me. He's won for all. And he's crowned us with his glory. So a question to end our message might sound familiar. Church, what is your purpose here? Why has God called you by the gospel, saved and redeemed you by the blood of Jesus Christ? Is it to just sit here and receive? Is it to collect as many toys as you want? Is it to put all your hopes and dreams in the world? No. You are here as a saved, forgiven, redeemed child of God to tell others about Jesus, to tell others that Jesus Christ died on the cross to forgive you and them of all their sins, to share with others that he has defeated sin and death and the devil. That's why you're here. For the church and her mission are the most important aspects of human experience and world history. 
For she bears the cross of Christ and the love of God. The cross and love that extends to the ends of all the earth. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And now may the peace that pass all understanding keep our hearts, our minds focused on the one true King, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I invite you to stand, friends, as we join together to confess the Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. He will come to around to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to join me now, as we have been for the past six weeks, going to our Lord in a time of prayer. Once again, if you're worshiping with us for the first time in a while, I will go silent, and then you as a congregation have the opportunity to pray out to our God. We pray. Heavenly Father, most gracious God, you have given us the gift of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and sent us out as your disciples to speak this truth. We know that the dragon is attacking and pulling us. We pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you give us courage to stand firm in the faith. You strengthen us by the truth of your word, that day in and day out we may recognize and know and show the love that you have for us in Jesus. So we ask that you bless this congregation, its mission to take your name further out into the C4 and all its people. Grant us the ability to do and accomplish the work that you have given to us, all by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we live in a nation that is constantly under attack, and we know Satan and the devil are hard at work. So we pray that and give thanks for the work you've done. We ask that you continue to work in each of our lives, help us do what we can in our little neck of the woods, and pray for those in leadership. That your name may continue to go forth, that your love may continue to shine, that those who are hurt and broken may be built back up by you and your love, that those in authority may not lose sight of who has the power, and that is you. But through it all, Lord, we know that we are just passing through. This is not our home. We know that Jesus has rescued and redeemed us and saved us from this world, given to us and to all who believe life everlasting with you. Father, we pray for those who are sick or hurt, battling in any way. We give them to you this day, dear Father, along with all these other petitions. that they would have peace in you, that you 
be with their persecutors, that you would turn all to you. Lord, be with all of the people that are furthering your name in the U.S. and in the world. Lord, we just ask that, that you continue to um, build up the ministries that, that you desire to go forward for your name and to um, strengthen those that are doing those things. Lord, we thank you for all our other brothers and sisters in Christ especially those that serve in the Shepherd Church. Thank you for the service that Pastor Brony and Pastor Frank do for the community and for all those in need. Now, Lord, whatever else is upon our heart, we know we can come to you at any time and pray and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, we have again worshiped in your presence and received both forgiveness for our many sins and the assurance of your love in Jesus Christ. We thank you for this undeserved grace and ask you to keep us in faith until with all your saints we inherit eternal salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. There's a cobweb there. See this blessing from our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. I invite you to remain standing as we sing the lion and the lamb.
Amen. Thanks for being here, friends. Go and have a seat. A couple quick announcements for you. There is no college Bible study this Thursday, October 13th. We will pick it up again um, next Thursday on the 20th. But college students, we do have our next campus meal, free campus meal coming up for you um, uh, Wednesday, October 19th. So not this Wednesday, but the next one. Uh, this Wednesday, though, is a board of directors meeting, and uh, it looks like we have an abundance of quick trip cards. So if you're driving anywhere... Um, Gas is important, so we have quick trip cards available for uh, purchase if you would like uh, to, to do that to support the church um, and the ministry of that way. As always, thank you to our servants up top and down below uh, for using your gifts to bless us. Thanks. Stop, 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 stop. Now, thank you, thank you. That's enough. I don't deserve any of this. Uh, just blessed by God to, to, to serve him in a way. It's truly, it truly is an honor and a blessing to do it, but it is extremely hard. So thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart for all the prayers and support that, that you bless um, God and his church with here at Luther Memorial, and then through that, blessing me as I serve him here. So now, honestly, go, guys. There's nothing else for us to do but to go out and carry this mission that Jesus has given to us to be the church. God's richest blessings, friends. So open up the gates, make way before the King. The God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. So who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains. And then